Oh, hello there. I thought we could have a little bit of a relaxing chat tonight. So, at this time of year, gardeners and allotment tearers can start to suffer from a condition called gardening despondency syndrome. And this is generally categorised by one taking a look around at the garden or allotment and thinking, oh, goodness gracious me, what's going on? It doesn't look particularly attractive. The best part of the growing season, gardening year, is behind me and I haven't really got that much to look forward to gardening wise until the spring. And many people do suffer from this and I myself lately have also noticed it starting to creep in and uh, as indeed it can do at this time of year but I've nipped it in the bud because although yes there's not so much reaping now, although there are still things coming, for instance today I went outside and uh, picked a lovely Concord pear and something like that really does uh, can help to soften the blow and alleviate the symptoms of gardening despondency syndrome but there are many other things that can be done as well where are they? so here look at these, in here is another little package of seeds which I purchased from the Real Seed Company. I've spoke a lot about that company before so we won't be going too much into that today. About three and a half weeks ago I put a video up about things that can be sown, seeds that can be sown in October so that people can still be growing greens produce through the winter period and I think this really can help people. I'm glad that video has been helpful and I intend to be doing another one along the same vein of plants, vegetables, seeds that can be sown in the month of November and in that package indeed are the seeds for that. Now one can go out to the allotment or the garden and look around and say oh it doesn't look particularly attractive, it's not as pretty as it once was, you know the leaves are falling off of deciduous trees. Well I saw this beautiful maple tree today, really, really was beautiful and uh, nice big leaves, may have been a Canadian maple, I didn't get to close enough to be able to, you know, have a closer look, but it really did look lovely, the leaves were turning that lovely purple colour, I saw an acer yesterday, looked absolutely beautiful, you know, beech trees when the leaves, they go that lovely colour and they, you know, they all come down. You see them blowing along the road with the wind as you're walking or driving along or travelling in the bus, whatever. You know, it just looks so beautiful. And there's so much to look at. And when one is really keen for gardening, for growing your own, it can be quite difficult this time of year if you're in, you know, a climate such as the UK. Of course, if you're in a tropical climate or something like that, totally different rules apply. But to, Sometimes you can be thinking, oh, I've got to be going, I've got to be doing something, I've got to be planning, thinking, well, well excusez-moi, you know, you've really got to go with the seasons to a degree, you know, take a think, take a step back and think, what way do I want to go with this? So, for example, I'm planning for more things I want to do with the project here, and also more things for the YouTube channel. I really want to expand on the exotics. I've already got quite a few exotics, many of you are aware of that, but uh, I want to get more because I really do want to produce some exotic fruit, you know, a decent amount of it, in a temperate climate, you know, here in the southeast of the UK. You know, I've got oranges on the way, but, you know, bananas, and mangoes. These are two things I'm really keen to produce and you know doing it in a non very far from ideal climate such as uh, you know the UK. Very, very, hopefully if I ever do it will be a very satisfying thing and I'm just thinking of ways to do this. I'm thinking of ways to still be growing things throughout the colder months and I intend to be setting some potatoes around the month of January because I want to be getting some new potatoes very, very early next season. So all these little things I've got going through here of plans, and I mean, it's nearly November, you know, and, you know, come February, March, who knows, the weather could be good again. I mean, I remember, you know, working outside on jobs, and in February, when it's been warm, 
working in a t-shirt so you know it's really not necessarily that far away and I've, I've said this many times before you know that uh, don't be the person who laments in winter when spring is just around the corner because you know, there's so much one can be planning you can be enriching your beds you can be putting broad beans in garlic you could probably still get away with putting shallots or onions in now maybe setting a little bit of spinach um, you know, you saw that video I put up a few weeks ago on what could be sown in October. I'm going to be putting one up, you know, what could be sown in November. And I intend to keep things going, you know, throughout this winter period. A degree of sensibility, of course, has got to be, uh, you know, applied here. I'm not saying go and set tomato plants now and put them outside and think you're going to get a decent crop. It's incredibly unlikely to happen. You know, you don't want to waste your effort. Common sense. But, you know... This uh, gardening despondency syndrome, it doesn't necessarily have to be, have as strong symptoms, as strong effects as many think, because there's still things that can be done, you know, even if you're getting your plant pots and washing them off, keeping everything tidy, you know, when the time comes, I'm hopefully going to wash my polytunnel finally, and just thinking, planning, preparation, and don't be afraid to take a break. Don't be afraid to take a step back and relax. There's nothing wrong with that. And in fact, I think it will probably help many people, myself included. So just enjoy the beautiful rest and relaxation that's hopefully coming up for you for this time of year while still planning ways to go forward with your project, whether it's an allotment, growing at home, or growing things on your windowsill. You know, making the best of what you've got and enjoying it. And don't be too hard on yourself. That's one thing that, uh, you know, I think is important. And if you've grown a few things that haven't gone well, maybe you've got coddling moth caterpillars in your pears, whatever, you know, so be it. The chips have fell where they may and, uh, you know, a new growing season is coming up and you can start to get an early start by putting a few things in spring onions for example you know lots to look forward to lots coming up so hope everybody out there is doing well and if you like my work please feel free to like share subscribe and see you in the next video